in a world where percussion education is not only imminent, but extremely popular, one man rises to the task. I mean, not rises as high up as other more popular tutors, but he'll rise a little bit and that's okay. Anyway, that one man is... Oh, hey guys, I'm Carson Jacobson. Um, I hope you like that new intro. I just tried it out for this video. See if it changes any viewings or subscriptions or anything. I'm just changing rates, you know, mixing things up, trying to be more casual, like I've said before. Anyway, as you can see today, and as was promised by last video, music theory, you know, ugh, music theory. Yeah, we all remember that. Um, as was promised, it's Glockenspiel Day, or some other people call it the bells, the bell sad, the glock of the mallets. Anyway, I'm talking kind of fast. I need to slow down. Uh, anyway, mallets is generally, a, just, so you, just for your education, fun fact, mallets actually refers to any keyboard instrument like the bell set or the xylophone or the vibes of the marimba. You know, they get kind of mm, big. It's fun. So anyway, glockenspiel is a really fun instrument. No, it's not. Glockenspiel sucks. Don't play it for music. I'm kidding. It's fine. But once you play bigger instruments, those are the fun ones. Glockenspiel is mostly like a step one for learning, okay? And in the spirit of learning, let's get started. Yeah, I know, I have to put these down. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot to tell you. I feel like some people are interested, so I'm gonna keep telling you what equipment I use in each video. I'm using a Ludwig uh, Glockenspiel with the uh, names of the notes etched on. And I'm using a Vic Firth M6 mallet set. So these are actually pretty new to take a look. They're pretty neat. Neato Frito. They're great. Shiny. I like the shiny. They're very shiny. Anyway, put them down. I know. We don't want to put them down. We want to get to the good stuff. How do I play it? How do I make cool sounds with it? I know. That's what I want to do too. But I can't. Because you have to know what this is first. Anyway. I don't know how well you can see it. This here is a glockenspiel. It's really great. It's made in China, like basically everything else. Um, as you can see, it's got the names of the notes etched on to each key. These are called keys, by the way. Some people also call them bars. Either one works. Pretty sure they're actually bars or keys. One of the two. Both work. It's great. Um, anyway, if you've ever played piano before, you can probably skip over the next little bit because this is just going over how to find the note names without the etches. So you're familiar with the piano, you've probably at least seen one before. These are what the black keys would be, you know, these extra rows. So, and these we can use as references. There's quite a few ways to tell. I don't know any of the cool tricks, you know, like the fun, the fun ones, like this one's like a house, I've heard. Like this is the front door, the back door. Oh yeah, and this is the doghouse, something like that. Anyway, yeah, front door, back door, Coretta and Andy, I think. I don't know. Anyway, when you have the set of two, just below is C, in the middle is D, just above is E. When you have the set of three, just below is F, in the middle to the left is G, middle to the right is A, and just to the right is B. I might have mixed up some directions along the way. Whatever. That's what's with the visual. Visual helps. Um, other than that, that's basically it. When you're looking at one of these notes, if you go to the key just above it, it's sharp. It's so like this is G, this is G sharp. If you go below it, it's the flat, G flat. As you'll notice, each one has two names, A sharp and B flat. That's and harmonics, complicated music theory. We'll get to that very far in the future. Anyway, and we're back, piano students that have played piano, we're back. You can stop here, here. Anyway, um, uh, I had something else. Oh yeah, rant time. Um, you'll notice I had the etchings on. I do not recommend this at all. Do not get the etches on the keys. It will impede your learning so bad. That's what made learning hard for me, but whatever. No, it's not, by the way. Um, what you gotta do is get a bell set that doesn't have a match on, and here's why. Generally, they'll sound better, and they'll help you learn better. Because, yeah, having the names etched on, 
it was very helpful for like three days three days because you know your first day you're like cool what is this this is my little boy playing the glockenspiel impression oh boy anyway um you're like okay this is a g because it says so so i know where g is now it's you know you have the three and it's 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 right there but it's g because it says so and then your brain instead of remembering there's the three and it's just below and to the left or whatever yeah to the left um your brain's not gonna remember that it's gonna be g because it says so that's not gonna help you can you imagine trying to play something like really fast and a flat G, F, because you have to find them. All right, where's the A flat? Where's the A flat? It's there because it says so. That's not gonna work out very well in the future. And I mean, sure, yeah, muscle memory, yada, 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 but still, it's better if you learn it the right way. Because another thing is most schools or professional grade will not have these etched on. Anyway, I've wasted enough time on this rant. Let's move on to how to play it properly. Yay! I dropped something, I'll pick them up. I found them. Okay, as I said before, these are big for thumb sixes, they're great. You remember from snare, snare's great, but you hold the mallets basically the same way. So if you didn't watch my how to hold your first drum stick, drumstick video, you might wanna go back and watch this because I'm not gonna be very detailed. Hit the middle, thumb, breath, loosen. Okay? One slight difference um, with the drumstick, you know, you want it to be kind of right on the end with just a little teeny bit sticking out. That's oftentimes not recommended for mallets. I generally go with about an inch off the end. If they're really long mallets, like xylo mallets, or here I have some marimba mallets. Notice how they're a little bit longer, not by as much. Oftentimes you'll see huge differences. I've seen marimba mallets that are like over a foot long. They're crazy. Anyway, so you can have more if it's a longer mallet. Most band directors I've seen recommend you divide the stick into thirds, right? Thirds. Thumb goes on the bottom third and then you wrap. I think I did something wrong. Do that right, big hands. So, just so you can see it again, so I can fix it. Like that, bottom third. Uh, sometimes I don't like that though. And another thing that I've seen other sources recommend is just go with between a half an inch to an inch off the end and that's good. All right, enough on holding the stick. How to play it. You remember how snare drum, it's all, all wrist. That's fun. Glockenspiel is a little different. There's a little elbow. Oh, quick thing on how tight to hold them. The best metaphor I've he heard is it's like a baby bird. Hold it, but don't kill it. Kind of thing. Be, be gentle, but don't lose it. Anyway, I've heard it's like 70% wrist and 30% elbow, something like that. Oftentimes that's about right. Just do whatever feels natural, unless it's like this, or like this, or like this. You don't want shoulders. Shoulders are all gonna be the side to side stuff. Moving from F to the C. Yeah, that's another thing about the glockenspiel. See how high that is? I feel like some computer speakers aren't even gonna be able to register that. That's another thing. Hey, comment below as to whether or not your computer speakers registered to that, because I'm genuinely curious. Here it is again, it's really high. Anyway, and then you strike directly in the middle of the key, both middle lengthwise and heightwise. Otherwise, if you go too up much to the top of the bottom, around where these screws are, that's going to be by the node. You don't want to play by the node, ever. It has a really bad sound. Hear the bad sound? Hear the good sound. Okay. All right, mm, so that's basics how to play it. All right.
right, so in there, that was just a basic C pentascale, I think it's called. Pentascale? Pentascale. I'm going to go with pentascale. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's the one with five notes. Anyway, you'll notice I alternated. That is very important. Almost, keyword almost there, remember the almost. Almost always. When you're playing a song, you will alternate. There are instances where you won't, like, you saw the double. Sometimes it's easier to double. Can you imagine trying to do that really fast? It's kind of hard. So, sometimes doubling is okay. But you want to alternate. Just assume alternate, and if you find out that doubling is easier somewhere, make sure that's okay with your director first. Other than that, you do you, man. And then, uh, anyway, uh, that's basically it. You gotta be really smooth. I'm gonna tell you the notes for the C pentascale, scale, just because, one more thing. Ending, ending thing, this is the end. So the C pentascale scale goes C, D, E, F, G, F, E, D, C. That's it. Really, the whole scale is just those first five, C, D, E, F, G. But when you're playing it, you'll almost always go back down. Uh, next week, we'll be looking at green scales. And yeah, I know, I say week. It's going to be more than a week. Or less than a week. Maybe it will be a week. Probably not. Because I'm not very punctual when it comes to these videos. Anyway, so, ending thing. Let's get this out of the way. You and me, face to face. Here we go. All right. So I got a couple things to ask of you, you know, because I taught you this amazing instrument. This thing is literally like at least 800 years old. I don't know how old this is. Wow. Glockenspiel's been around for a long time. And I've taught you how to use it. So I have a couple favors to ask you. First, you can just leave a like on the video if you liked it or if you didn't. Just, just please. It makes me feel good inside. If you could subscribe to my channel, that way you don't have to hunt down my next video. Like I said, I'm not very regular. So subscribe and turn that bell on, you know, the ring, ding, 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 ring, ding, ding, you know, bell, turn it on. I don't post videos very often, so I'm not going to be like spamming your account or anything. Don't worry about that. And comment. If you want to comment whether or not your speakers registered that, I'm sure they did, but I'm, I'm curious as to whether or not it's high enough that it doesn't. Or just comment on what you want, what you want to learn, what you want me to teach, what you think I need to learn better because I sucked at something, whatever, whatever. And share this with your other percussion friends, whether they are masters or beginners. Please and thank you. Anyway, that's me signing off. But in a world. Okay, we're done with the intro, dude.